This is Bryson's car. He traded a dirt bike for it, drug it home on a trailer, and spent almost a year figuring out the parts and rebuilding the engine. He even got it running, well, kind of, and then he left. Today is Bryson's birthday, which I'm pretty excited about because he has now officially left his teenage years in the past. Also, it means that he has just over five months until he comes home, which is about how much time I have left to finish this little darling. But in the meantime, I thought about what I could get Bryson for his birthday specifically, and I came up with what I think is a pretty good idea. This steering wheel is great, but I think it suits maybe my preferences more than it does his. And so I found something that I think is a little different that might be more appropriate for him. So this one goes away, out with the old, and in with the Momo. Now the cool thing is I got another hub for it, so you can quickly swap them out if you decide you like the other one a little better. This one, interestingly, has, I believe, the same diameter. I think they're both 350 millimeter, but feels a little bit bigger in diameter. I'm not sure why. I do know that the, that the dish is just ever so slightly more because I can't reach the blinker quite as easily when my hands are on the steering wheel as I can on the other one. I think the red anodized aluminum is kind of a nice little add as well. It's pretty, pretty flashy. So now I have the red anodized aluminum collar, whatever that thing is called. I have the red threading on the steering wheel. I've got red threading on the brake boot and red threading on this lovely little drink holder, which you probably can't even see. Happy birthday, Bryson. Now, while I'm at it, the passenger window has never worked right in this car, and I've tried to fix it a number of times. I finally gave up on repairing the old electric regulator, and I found a replacement from a junkyard. I have that part now, and I'm going to put it in and hope that it works better than the other one. Actually, I'm not going to just hope. I'm going to bench test it. And then assuming it passes the bench test, then we'll install it. I've messed with this regulator quite a bit. You can see I swapped out the sheathing where the beads travel as the window comes down, thinking that maybe it was gummed up and preventing easy movement. That didn't make much difference, if at all. You can also see, though, that I've messed around in here. These beads basically act like a bit of a chain, and this is the sprocket. So the motor is attached to the sprocket, it turns the beads, it's got a little bit of a spring action in here so that if it tries to go too far in either direction it can compress the spring. Well, this one had some beads break and so I made an attempt at keeping tension on the beads and it kind of worked a little bit for a little while but I got tired of messing with it so the idea is to replace it. So if we send 12 volts here, it goes that direction. You can hear the, some of the clicking that happens when it, when it can't continue its travel for whatever reason. And there's what happens when the beads break. You end up with this gap in here where the sprocket basically is spinning on the chain, so to speak, because there are no chain teeth in the sprocket anymore. And yes, I have tried several different types of ways to, to fill the bead. I even put some some fishing sinkers on it at one point. And that kind of worked for a little while too, but nothing has really held up very well. Frankly, it's just not a very good design. Yeah, you can see as it... You just can't quite... And there's not even a window on it right now. Oh, there is a... It is stuck here. I went too far and sent it up out of the track. Well, it really doesn't matter because this isn't going back on there. That thing sounds so much cleaner. I'm optimistic. Run up the other way. Back down again. All right, so we'll put this at about the halfway point. Put it together. Break time's over. Those were simple additions that I think make a difference. 
But uh, the big job is really in front of me still, and that is the painting. And so I think what I'm going to do is spend a little bit of time feeling out what the project will look like, especially since I'm not quite ready to tackle it full on yet. I need the temperatures outside to come up a little higher so that I can keep temperatures in the shop at about that 70 to 75 degree Fahrenheit mark, even with air flowing from the outside through the building. So I really need the exterior to be 70-ish degrees before I can tackle that project. And I don't want to have parts lying all over, waiting for the temperatures to come up. I would also kind of like to have the car be drivable. I've been driving it fairly regularly, not as much recently, but I like to have it run at least once a week just to keep things moving. And as soon as the parts are thrown all over the place, then that's going to be a little harder to do. I think I'm going to pull doors off. In fact, check me on this. I have never painted an assembled car. I've always taken everything off and painted it bare. And while I would love to do that here, I'm not convinced that the juice is worth the squeeze. So probably I'll paint this one assembled. And the idea would be to take the doors off, take the fenders off, take the hood off, take the rear hatch off all of the weather stripping, and then paint things for the most part in pieces, putting everything back together to do the final clear coat. Maybe the final coat of color as well, but definitely the final clear coat. I am looking at a color change. Now, just so that you know, Bryson in his head has settled on a white paint job. And the reason that he settled on a white paint job is because the car has, in his mind, a blue interior. Now, what he really wants is a red paint job, but he can't quite get past the idea of red paint with a blue interior. So his thinking is that he'll paint it white, and then at some day in the future, when he gets a chance to change the interior to black, which we all know would probably be never, then he would consider maybe a red wrap or redoing the paint in red or something like that. So the interior is already black. All of the sheet metal is blue, which is a little bit of an, I don't know, less than ideal combination. I'm not going to be able to paint the engine bay because I'm not interested in stripping all the engine out. I should be able to get all the door jams and where the rear hatch is and all of those things painted red, but there will be places that we see blue, like in the engine compartment. That's just going to be that way, and I think that's okay, but Check me on that. Is that the right way to do it? Take as much of it off as possible and then paint it mostly disassembled with the final coat going on after it's assembled? I don't know. I have to admit, I've got a little bit of anxiety about how to paint an assembled car, just having never done it before. So I'd appreciate ideas there. Next step for me is going to be to start feeling out the car and seeing where the bumps and bruises are, recognizing that I've repaired, I think, what are the two biggest bumps and bruises. And then from there, the disassembly can begin. Hey, Bryson, happy birthday, bro. Yeah, I know you're not watching this right now, but have a happy birthday anyway. I'll see you in about five and a half months. Love you, bud.